Welcome. My name is Remy, and this is the presentation for the Greenspan College of Urban Affairs. And like I said, my name is Remy, and I'm the director of the office. And I'd like to introduce my co-hosts, and so I'll let them introduce themselves. My name is Keisha Johnson. I'm the assistant director of the Advising Center. My name is Andrea Corral Rodriguez, and I'm one of the graduate assistants here at the Greenspan College of Urban Affairs. My name is Marissa Tiemann, and I'm one of the graduate assistants at the College of Urban Affairs. And we are here today to welcome you to our college presentation. And as you can tell, we are a very diverse mix of colleagues. And so we're excited to share information with you. So who really are we? What is our college mission? Basically, the best way to put it is that we are problem solvers. We're trying to make the world a better place. And basically, we're doing that by building resilient communities, looking at different policies that are being made, creating and looking at different um, mental health and behavioral challenges in the community. So like right now, we are dealing with the COVID-19 crisis and mental health issues are on extremely on the rise. So and then also looking at how do communities react to emergency situations. So basically, at the end of the day, we are really are trying to make this world a better place by being problem solvers and being more resilient and looking at policy making. So I know a lot of that sounds uh, may sound a little overwhelming, but let me show you what kind of degree programs we have. So our first degree program is communication studies, and we will be going into these in more depth individually. Our second one is criminal justice, which is our most commonly chosen degree or most popular amongst the students. Then we have journalism and media studies, social work, urban studies, and the Brookings public policy minor. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started into our first degree program, which is communication studies. So communication studies, um, the complexities of human communication at both the public and interpersonal level. Um, students can take classes from anything from interpersonal communications to um, principles of persuasion to health communication. So if you think about communication, it's really a skill set that's embedded into every degree program, into every profession. And so this is a very broad um, course of study. Some of the opportunities that students can go into with the communication studies degree um, speech writing, we have several students that go into politics as either a campaign director, a speech writer, um, lobbyist, um, information specialist. We have quite a few that have gone into even marketing um, um, and a lot of different diverse areas since communication studies is so broad. There's also lots of clubs and organizations that students can get into with communication studies. They do have a UNLV debate team, which students can try out for, and they are nationally ranked one of the top programs in the country. They also have a club and organization called the United Conversations Network, which was started by a student in which they help students craft um, public argument for different various controversial topics that's going on in uh, the United States. And then they also have their own honor society. Next, we're gonna talk about criminal justice and I'm gonna let Marissa Tymon, who is a graduate student actually in the criminal justice field, talk about this major. So with our criminal justice degree here at UNLV, um, we want to study human behavior and causes of crime. And we like to look at how uh, the different criminal justice entities work as well as the prosecution of crime. Now there's three different types of courses that we offer at UNLV. You have courses that the nature of crime, um, specifically white collar crime, women in crime, um, youth crime and society. You have a course on organization and administration, so you can look at the correctional institution, crime prevention, probation and parole. And you have courses on law and society um, and social social inequity and crime, jury decision making and psychology in the legal system. Um, there are a bunch of different career opportunities for those who decide to major in criminal justice. You can be a probation officer, an advocate, um, work for the law enforcement, um, or you could even get involved with the court system um, itself. Um, you can also use this degree for law school. Um, 
With criminal justice, there are a bunch of clubs and organizations that we have as well. We have the mock trial team where you kind of get a real life experience um, of being on a trial and competing against other teams um, in the US. You have the criminal justice club where, you're, where you'll have professionals in the field come in and talk about their experience and kind of give you that one-on-one -on -one of what it's like to actually work in the field. Um, you have the trailblazers program, which um, is a mentorship program for first generation students. Uh, it's a really good opportunity to take advantage of. And lastly, we have the Alpha Phi Sigma National Honor Society um, and the career fair, which we offer every spring. So with journalism media studies, this major emphasizes the integration of variety of mediums for communication, as well as techniques and approaches to prepare for the ever-changing world in technology. So for example, you can go into audio and podcasting and learn how to do your own radio show, media studies, which is understanding the, the theories and why media is important. So this is geared more towards students that are interested in graduate school. There's your traditional print journalism, which is also focusing on online journalism. This is something that we've seen a change toward. There's public relations and marketing communications. So this is anything of learning how to develop a marketing campaign, also being a public relations professional whenever you get public information requests and giving any sort of like press briefings and that sort of a thing. Learning about social media and how to stay current with something that is very much in demand, learning how to be a sports reporter, and then we have visual production, which is basically how to be a broadcast journalist. Also, this uh, major has career opportunities. So you, as I've said before, you can be a news anchor, a public relations specialist, a sports announcer, and there's a variety of other things. You know, you're not just tied to this. You could also go on to become a professor if you wanted to go with the media studies route. There's lots of different things that you could do with this degree. With clubs and organizations, they have UNLV TV. They put on a variety of shows. So if you're interested in learning how to write a script, run a show from start to finish, this would be a great organization to get involved. There's KUNV 91.5, which is a radio station for the college. This you can have your radio show. And there's, I know several of my classmates when I was an undergrad, they had the opportunity to pitch a show they were interested in. There's a Rebel Report. There's the Rebel Folio, the Public Relations Student Society of America. This is for students interested in integrated marketing communications. And this society brings in speakers in the field so that you can learn to network and understand sort of the career opportunities and just sort of pick the brain of the professionals in the field where you also aspire to be. And then there's the similar one for Society of Professional Journalists for those students interested in war and the journalism side. So I will also be talking about social work. I am currently a master's student in this program. And so here, basically, you want to be an advocate for the community, an individual, and the broader society. So those courses, so those aspects of social work are reflected in the courses. So you learn about social work or policy. You can also, if you choose to go into direct practice, how to be a therapist and, you know, work with mental health, which is something that's very important right now with the COVID-19 pandemic. But similarly, this also learning how to be an advocate through policy change. You can, you know, there's career opportunities to be in the CPS protection program. And then if you choose to go on to graduate school, you can do advanced CME because you were in the Bachelor's of Social program. And then you can also get a law degree at the same time as you're a Master's of Social Work student. They also have clubs or organizations. So there's the Alpha Phi Honor Society and the University Association of Social Work Students. So they do sort of drives to just collect materials for the community and just help them with the needs. <coughs> So I'm going to turn it over to our director to talk about the Urban Studies program. Hello, everybody. So Urban Studies is basically a degree that's really 
tailored around individuals that want to go to work in nonprofit organizations, they want to work for government agencies. And this type of degree you are going to be working with, you're going to be looking at data, looking at how communities are built, how to improve communities, what are policies that are being made. So, for example, right now we've got students who have graduated with this type of degree that have gone on to work, work for the water district. They're working in education centers so that looking at the Nevada system of higher education, looking at the policies that are being made, working for Clark County, looking at what are the K through 12 policies that are developed and why. But with this degree, you learn a lot about the conceptual knowledge and technical skills needed to understand and analyze physical, social, political and economic environments. So another example of what a student might do with this type of degree, they might be looking at now, if a new vaccine is brought on board for the COVID-19, how is they would work with healthcare professionals to analyze data to determine how should it be equitably distributed amongst the individuals that live in Clark County or in the city of Las Vegas or so forth. So. In addition to that, the urban studies degree, there is what's also known as a Brookings public policy minor. Now, a minor, I always describe a minor as being kind of like the side dish to an entree. Your major is the entree, the side dish is your minor. It's an optional item, but basically with a minor, you are going to take about six courses, six to eight courses in another discipline. With this type of minor though, this minor bridges both economics political science, and urban studies courses. So as you can see from the courses listed, you've got elections and governance, global economics, economic analysis, foreign policy, metropolitan issues and governance. These kinds of courses give you a very broad perspective of how government works across the nation, or not across the nation, I should say internationally. So it's a really good degree for somebody, or minor I should say, who is interested in getting a, or going on to law school, potentially somebody who is wanting to work in public policy, somebody who's wanting to work at a think tank. And so this minor is a really robust one and it's part of the minor, you will actually work on a brief so they will take a contemporary issue and you will work with a Brookings Public, Public Policy Fellow, which is a faculty member, and you will actually come up with a solution to a problem or an area to study and actually help write a brief, which means you would be published by the time you graduate. Again, a very unique opportunity, and it's a great um, minor to complement any degree at UNLV, any degree that's in um, our college, or any degree outside of our college. So a minor is something you can pick that is outside of what could be in your college or outside of your college. Now we'll move on to advice. I know many of you are still considering um, what colleges you're going to go to, or even maybe what you're majoring in. But just some advice to get you started and get ready is to make sure that you take the ACT and the SAT very seriously as those are test scores that will be used um, in order to place you into your freshman English and math class. So, you know, by blowing that off, you could be in a lower math course or a lower English course um, than you necessarily need. Those can also be used to determine admissions into the university. So you want to make sure that you take them early enough so that you can also take them several times if need be. Also, if you can, like if you're at a school where you have dual credit, where you can be enrolled at both um, a local community college or co local college, as well as high school and earn college credit while in high school, that's always favorable because that's less money that you're then spending at the college level. Um, also, if you have AP credits, you have those opportunities to take advanced placement courses, which are like college level courses taken at the high school or even IB um, courses, then those are always great opportunities and less classes that you would have to take at the college level. We just ask that you always make sure that all of your test scores and all of your like advanced placement or dual credit is sent over preferably before you attend a new student orientation. The other thing to do is make sure that you apply early. Um, that's very important in terms of if you qualify for any scholarships. Um, oftentimes, 
and this goes hand in hand with doing the FAFSA before the priority deadline, there's always more students who qualify for scholarships and there are money to give out. So by applying early, making sure you're admitted to the university um, as soon as their application becomes available and making sure that you do the FAFSA before their priority deadline, put you in the best possible place to receive any scholarships that you may be awarded. And then I just say, start exploring careers, start that process early. You know, the earlier you can figure out what it is that you wanna do while you're in college, the better off you are because then you're not necessarily changing your major two, three, even four times, which is about the national average now. So you can actually start taking classes within your field as soon as possible by just start exploring your careers early. And then research college and universities, make sure that they actually have the programs that you're interested in pursuing. Um, naturally, like if you wanna do something like um, marine biology, Las Vegas is not gonna be the place for you, but you'll need to be by somewhere by water. So making sure that whatever it is that you're really interested in pursuing, that the college or university that you're looking at actually has opportunities to pursue those degrees. And get the most out of your college experience. As you can see today, every single major that we offer has lots of opportunities to get involved. And not only by your major, but the college has opportunities just in general from joining student government to joining um, the lightsaber um, community, which you know gives students an opportunity to test out their Star Wars skills. So there's literally a club and opportunity here for everybody. And one of the greatest resources that you'll have while you're in college is an academic advisor. So as you can see, we are all here today to help you. This is a picture of our academic advising center and how we're currently conducting our um, advising appointments is all virtually either through phone or through Google Meets. But this is what we're here for to help you kind of guide your journey through college. Um, we'll help you with recommendations of courses. We'll help you if you're struggling in particular with anything while you're here at the university. We're kind of your, your go-to person to point you in the right direction. And we're here from the time that you start your new student orientation to we'll be at your graduation. So we really are a resource for you and every single college on our campus has their own advising center. So dedicated professionals to help you along your journey. I thank you all for attending our presentation today and hope that if you have further questions that you consider um, contacting us. This is our email, our phone, and our web page. Our web page does have even more detail about all of our different degree programs. It also has samples of like our degree worksheets if you want to take a look at the exact courses that you would need to complete a degree. But we are also happy to meet with prospective students. So if you'd like to call or um, email us to set up an advising appointment just to talk about some of your individual concerns that you have. That is what we're here to do. So thank you all for attending our presentation today. We hope to uh, see you in the near future here as a rebel. Thank you.